All right, so we're going to do some math helps here. And so this is, I'm going to do an example of a derivative of a vector. And I'm going to also do an example of a relative velocity that shows how this derivative of a vector can work. So if we start with any vector as a function of u, now normally when we're dealing in mechanics, we're going to use that function of position or as a function of time. And if this, if A is a position vector, then that would be a function of time per se. And if it's a velocity vector, it might be position and time. So we're gonna use this AU as a vector function of U. And recall that any derivative with respect to a function derives from that limit where we're getting that change in A with respect to U, and then we can do that limit. But ultimately, what that does for us is it gives us our derivative of A and U, but remember our I, J, and K directions are gonna be independent. And so we're gonna look at whatever the function of AX with respect to U is. We're gonna do that derivative. We're gonna do the derivative with respect to Y, and we're gonna do the derivative with respect to Z as it is a function of that AU. So remember what we have with a rule that if I have any two vectors, if I do the derivative, I'm gonna get the derivative of A vector and the derivative of B vector. So let's look at this in terms of a relative velocity because that's really gonna help us out and understand how this can be used to our advantage in mechanics. So we have a two particles. We have R1, which is a position vector of particle one, and R2 is a position vector of particle two. So if I come over here and we look at this displacement, so I'm gonna look at the displacement of particle two with respect to, and just as a little quick side note, you'll see this WRT, and that means with respect to, and it's a shorthand. So as I do these math notes, as we go further on throughout the semester, you'll see WRT instead of just with respect to. So if I do R2 minus R1, so if we do that displacement vector, we can do our vector addition. Here's our R1 and R2, and I can represent this mathematically as a graphic representation. And we know that velocity is our change in position vector with respect to time. So we can look at our velocity vector of particle one with respect to particle or particle two with respect to particle one. And we can do that derivative of our R12 vector, which we can do here. And then we can break that up using our rule from back up here. We can use that. And this gives us our relative velocity. And we can manipulate this so that we can actually represent the velocity of two, which is the actual velocity of particle two in terms of particle one. So this may come in handy when we start doing relative velocities or relative accelerations. It's part of our problems in kinematics. So let's look at this as an example. So a particle moves along the x-axis with a speed v that it's given by, its position is given by r1 in the x direction a plus vt, where a is a constant. We're gonna have a second particle moving with the same speed, but it's moving in the y direction. And we wanna find the relative speed. So we can just go through that our v12 is equal to v2 minus v1, which is gonna, they're both traveling at the same speed. One is in the y direction, one is in the x direction. And we get this result. And we can go ahead and find the magnitude and we can work through that. And we get this as our magnitude result. Now, this is why we do those rethink and relooks at the problems because we can also do it as taking our R21 minus our R1, plugging in that information, taking our derivative with respect to time, and look at here, we get the exact same result. So there's more than one way to approach the problem. Sometimes one way is gonna make a little more sense than the other, but hopefully this will give you an idea of how you can utilize this vector mathematics here that we that we can play with in the calculus and get all the way down to looking at a relative velocity.